cheapest handheld SDR radio currently on the internet. As I'm making this video, this is on Banggood sale at just around 50 UK pounds with free delivery, 70 US dollars. And that's before I get a discount code. Can you believe that? I reviewed this very radio back in May 2023 when it was launched and it was launched at 89 pounds and that was still quite a bargain because I'd recently bought a Malahi SDR radio at 130 so I thought it was cheap then and then I think I reviewed looked at it again in November because it dropped down to 72 pounds and now it's just about 50 UK pounds quite incredible now back when I made that original review in 2023 I was a little harsh on this radio because I've been used to my Malahi which has a full capacitive touch screen and I was able to touch the waterfall for tuning I'd got used to that this one has a partial touch screen it's a resistive touch screen it's not as good as a capacitive and I thought that was a real disadvantage and I really went hard on it in the review at 89 pounds I still, st I still think it would be nice if it had a full capacitive screen. But after I made that uh, video, I had lots of comments from people that went out and bought this and said, you know what, Fred, I can do without the touch screen, just using the encoder to get through all of the options on the screen. It's not too bad. And I myself put this in the shed shack all year. It spent all year outside, all throughout the winter connected just to a switch on my antenna because my radio hasn't got a waterfall and it's so useful just to switch this over and just have a quick quick look across the band on the CB band and just to see if there's any activity. Save tuning around all of the channels on my radio and I used it for a year without the touchscreen and to be honest with you I got on with it I didn't really miss it so I think I was very harsh on that original review I can't go back and change it. So I wanted to look at this again with fresh eyes at 50 pounds because I honestly think it's an absolute bargain now. So let's get it on the bench, see what we get in the box and then have a look at its functions and features. Just like before on the original review, there's not much of a box opening experience. There's no instructions on this radio. You're just left to your own devices. If you like to fiddle with radios, that's probably a good thing. If you're new to radios, that's not such a good thing. All you get in the box is a reasonable USB-C charge lead we do have a big battery in this radio and i can confirm that it lasts for a long long time it's a 5000 mah 3.7 volt lithium ion battery so you don't need to charge it very often get a better quality antenna than i originally got with the radio it's got one of these ones with a heavier ring on the uh, on the bottom there you've got a uh, female sma connector on the top of the radio and then you do get a little screen pusher thing, which kind of, I don't know really, it's not all that important because as I say, this is not a full capacitive screen. And that's a bit of a shame that all of this part of the screen is dead. The, the only part that you can use as a touch screen is to put in frequencies which um, is quite useful, I suppose, to be perfectly honest. Sometimes, like what I've noticed with this, having used it for a couple of years, sometimes this goes a little bit out of calibration and seems to correct itself. It's playing up. Well, it's actually okay at the moment, but it has played up in the past. But that's all you can do. There, there is nothing else on the screen which is touchscreen. It's a bit of a shame, and that's why I slated it on the first review. But at £50, I think I can live with it. So what you have to do to get through to all of the options here is you just have to press the encoder and then you can choose the options. We'll have a closer look at those options uh, in a minute. And the same for the, same for the tuning. So yeah, it, it's, it's a little bit clunky in that respect. But as I say, for 50 quid, I forgive it. When we look at the units themselves, I can't see any changes over two years which I don't think is a bad thing. It's nicely made. The screen is very sharp. It's very clear. 4.3 inch, 800 by 480 pixels. So it, it's certainly sharp enough. And the bodywork on the radio is very tough. Having had this for two years, not had any issues with this. This is my older one, by the way. I have dropped it a couple of times and absolutely fine. So it is a full metal chassis. 
aluminium or aluminium if you like and it is very tough it's also quite heavy with that large 5000 mAh battery just quickly looking on the side of the radio here USB-C charging um, can you connect this to a computer interface I'm not aware that you can I've connected this to a computer and it just goes to charge so I don't think there's software available that allows you to do it simple on off switch also has a 5 volt out USB quite useful because it is a big battery you can charge your phone I haven't uh, I haven't done that myself and then we have a pretty decent encoder now as I say I've used this on and off for over two years and it still feels absolutely fine it's not jumping it's got a little bit loose compared to the new one the new one the new one does feel a little bit tighter as you would expect I, I, I suspect it's the same encoder they've slightly changed the uh, knob but it's still working absolutely no problem on top of the radio just as I say female SMA connector there for your antennas audio output it is stereo on uh, FM and a schematic on the back there just for decoration really now when we get to the specs of this SDR radio tuning ranges um, all the way from 100k to 149 megahertz so just just over the airband it misses out on 446 and 2 meters 70 centimeters it's a bit of a shame but it is more of a shortwave radio as far as the spectrum display goes it is adjustable you have a maximum spread of 192 kilohertz 128 and 64 so you can zoom in on your signal There's some other specs on the radio it does have 99 presets i believe it says that you can enter channel names as well as channel numbers i'm not sure about that i, I personally haven't done that weighs at 310 grams so it's fairly uh, fairly chunky and they reckon the runtime is anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. Not quite sure if it's that much, but I know when I had this in the shack, it seemed to go a couple of weeks before the little battery indicator went to red and I had to recharge it. Without a capacitive touch screen, the only user interface is via this encoder. For short menu shortcuts there, we simply press the encoder. At the moment you can see it says speaker press it again, goes to earphones. This is quite interesting and quite useful. You can independently adjust the speaker volume and the earphone volume. So if you wanted to connect this to a amplifier, for example, you can still use the internal speaker as well as the earphone output, a little unusual. So a quick press on there just takes you through the basic functions there. There's the, your uh, width and then channel channel memories and then back to speaker to access all of the other functions on the screen you have to hold this in with your finger and then turn it at the same time I've just saved that to memory now we can access all of the features when it turns red now the only problem with that and this was my original complaint as you can see look, you, it leaves an impression on your finger you, you do have to put a fair bit of pressure on it um, you get used to it and I'll be honest with you I've not, I've not really found it a problem and the same thing when it goes down to the tuning if we go back here just go through all of your tuning uh, digits here your steps again you have to just hold your finger down but you do kind of get as I say you do get used to it it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Got a few basic options to change the display. First, when it comes to the peak meter here, you've got uh, three different spread rates. So at the moment we're set on 192 kilohertz. We can drop that down to 128 to zoom in and then the lowest setting is 64. It's not infinite, but it's a useful amount. Below the scope, we also can change the waterfall. You've got two choices here. You can have a line as a spectrum scope or simply change it back to the regular waterfall. So let's just have a quick listen to that mono speaker. 
it does go quite loud and it's also quite clear as well. They think it's important and what leads the six o'clock news bulletin on the BBC still matters. And I, you know, I, to me it is extraordinary that the BBC gets into so much trouble when something like GB News, a direct commercial rival, is supposedly following the same rules of due impartiality under, under Ofcom rules, but essentially, unlike Nick and his colleagues at LBC, who do have balance screen, across yeah. the schedule, I don't see that GB News does have any kind of balance really across the schedule between, between right, left and right. Um, Nick, I'm going to make you, for one minute, Director yeah. General, the new Director General of the BBC. <laughs> Train control. What are you yeah. going to do? This is... You are the accept. You're the Telegraph candidate for the, the DG. So, what what are you going to do in your your, your minutes of rule? I, I think you you and your colleagues have suffered enough without me coming at the helm. Um, it's too big. It needs to be broken down. I, I, I think it resembles the Home Office, which is simply too big to be properly managed. I think you need, for the purpose of debate, five tremendous men or women who are going to run their own departments. They all report into I don't know different a, a chief uh, display on or something the like that. Scope, but yeah. expecting one creep because. Let's face it, we're, we're talking Green. after the BBC Just a probably line. a few days ago produced some oh, of the most blue. classic television that I've seen in years. Traitors, absolutely superb. You're coming to the end of your Strictly Come Dance. I don't watch that, but it's going to be huge. It's going to be a juggernaut. So on the one hand, you've got these tremendous successes. On the other, you've got challenges of the Pretty news good, department isn't it? that For I think 50 is pounds. wrestling with 24-hour news. I would say I think all your bosses... Have been... As I mentioned, you can change the spread of the display on there well, on the bandwidth. Well, he has arrived, and we think he is in the Oval Office. So 192 at the moment. Unusually low profile arrival. 28. Foreign leader coming in via a side door 64. to the West Wing, not the usual uh, motorcade up the driveway and the US Marines and all the pageantry. And I think that might Back be... to 192. Uh, Obviously, this is FM. It's, um, it's very wide. about um, doing any publicity if and when they get some kind no of No RDS today. information, unfortunately. You don't Trump get that. Because what here is an agreement... Even two years later, although they've not really done anything to improve the radio, I still think it's a good little SDR especially at this lower price. Let me show you some footage I did shoot with one of these connected to an uh, outside antenna. You're listening to Road Today. Let's turn to the latest developments regarding Japan's contentious plan to release the waste water into the sea. A South Spring team of experts has conducted a two-day inspection tour of Japan's tsunami-ravaged Fukushima nuclear power plant amid concerns over Tokyo's plan to release treated yet still radioactive waste water into the sea. Okay, Sierra 51, Kilo Zulu, you are on the log, 73, ciao. Uh, no, 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 negative, negative. Uh, decision number seven, a very weak signal, very, very weak, number seven portable again. Um, sorry, very, very low. Echo, uh, Echo 21, Echo 21, Hotel Zulu portable, roger. Uh, ten days ago in the central part of Italy, uh, there was a great hurricane and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, for, for uh, two days. Um, there, there was many, many rain falling down, and uh, back in the spot of Italy, uh, uh, the microphone is a micro casque de gaming, a little bit modified. I'll get an écouteur to be able to listen to the speakers. Et un petit, un petit casque de gaming à 20, à 20 euros sur AliExpress, hein. donc rien d'exceptionnel. Big 
Also, bearing in mind, I had this in the shed shack as a scanner throughout the whole year. Hot weather, freezing cold weather, damp weather, and in those clips you just saw on air was what I recorded throughout that year, having this uh, in the shed shack, and it I didn't really miss a beat, and I left it out there all the time. So I can say I've well product tested this over a two year period. Like all of these China products, there are a few idiosyncrasies, um, a couple of things, say that sometimes can be a little bit odd as I mentioned when you when you um, do touch the screen and you type in the frequencies every now and then it would just get a little bit out of sync and you'd have to switch it off and switch it back on again it lost, lost the registration somehow uh, but that wasn't too bad and then there was the clock I don't know how you adjust the clock on this I don't know if it picks it up from the FM I don't listen to a lot of FM I'm always on shortwave but uh, I noticed when I sort of switched it off and recharged it, the, the clock would just the clock would just set a random date, and you probably saw that on the clip, so it didn't bother me. But there it is, and I think, as I say, at the moment it's it's a bit of a bargain. I don't know how long this particular model is going to be uh, sold before it's depleted or superseded. It's been on the market for two years, and the price has come down and down and down. And uh, so I think it's a case of maybe grab it while you can. Uh, at the moment, it is incredibly cheap. Uh, 50 pounds, about $70. Banggood are also going to have a sale on, which will probably be starting a few days after this video. So it might go down even less. And I do get a discount code. And I do appreciate, I do read your comments. It's not valid in every country. Certainly uh, in the UK, I do get a discount code, which will get you a little bit off and the postage is free as well because it's over £40. So it's a real bargain at the moment. I'd really recommend it. I'd get one just, just to sort of play with it. I do wish it would have had a touch screen, of course, but you can't get everything, can you? So anyway, there it is. A link to this is in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. And that's the end of the review. I hope you found it useful. I just had to show you this before it disappears. Thumbs up, there it is from Fred in the Shed. As always, it only takes a second. If you could give me a thumbs up, I would like to see it. If not, that's not a problem. So please look after each other, stay safe, and of course, I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers, guys.